Well, our house in Canada, where we lived for 18 years, um, is no walls. It's all open concept. Oh, so if I was in the kitchen or some other room and he's practicing, it's all open. F sharp! No. <laughs> That's, That's trill. really out of tune. <laughs> trill is flat again. So I promise I won't play out of tune again. <laughs> She's very exact, and she always has been. And I was a little bit not so exact. Well, that's together. when we play chamber music together, and it's all strings, which we did for many years with the viola quintet and piano quintet and everything, not string quartet. Why? Why is that? Well, because if he plays a quarter note that's the end of a phrase, and he's, <laughs> and we're all like, bum. The <laughs> <laughs> soloist, you know? right. yeah. Do you miss the, the orchestra life, the orchestra playing? No, I'm getting to the point where I can actually listen to a symphony now. Like your Beethoven 7, yeah. I can deal with that now. Whereas before I couldn't handle. I you just, had orchestra withdrawal? Yeah, no, I needed time. Yeah. I needed to clear it out and principal for 26 years. Wow. You know? That's a lot. I know it's a lot, but um, I had to make a switch because I was doing less and less orchestra, more solo playing, and then it's different, as you know. Of course. But I had to get that out of my system. What do you like more? Teaching, conducting, playing violin, viola? Playing with your wife. All of it. Does this make you a better musician? Yes. I started when I was about nine years old in Cholon with my teacher, Feher. We played at least once a week. By the time I left for New York, four or five years later, I, I literally knew the whole literature. I played the first, or I played second, and we played duets. We played a lot of duets. Uh, because it makes you listen. Immediately it makes you listen. It makes you also look up. You have to look and see what's happening over there. The extension of that is, of course, begin, becoming more of apparent is when you start looking at the score. And I was always interested in the sound of the orchestra. I today use that a lot with the students. I say, who starts the Mendelssohn Violin Concerto? Boy, have I heard stories, <laughs> you know. And who's playing the melody behind you? Who plays the solo? They go, oops, uh, they don't know. Wow. So wow. it's weird. Yeah. Anyhow, so to go back to your question, after starting to work on the scores, I was about 16. I went to the archival uh, stuff in the New York Philharmonic. I mean, Mahler scores with Lenny Bernstein's markings wow. and Mahler markings and Bruno Walter. And so you learn from all that. I have this strong memory of having a masterclass <laughs> with you when I was 15 in Cholon. And I was playing second violin in a Dvořák American quartet. You had in your hand the viola. And I was playing it apparently not so good. And you just stood behind me and with this enormous, beautiful sound, just play this solo for me. And I'm like, wow, I'm so way behind. I have so much to learn. <laughs> so, But you know, I had mentors that did the same thing to me. So I just relate that. There is a limit to how much you can talk about absolutely. music. Absolutely, absolutely. You just need to hear it. When you're present. sitting in the orchestra and there's no time beater, and you just play, or somebody plays the piano as a, as a soloist, the orchestra changes. Oh, yeah. Right? There's a whole energy that's totally different. Hence, the sound then becomes, if you really like what you're hearing, the sound becomes synonymous. It's amazing. And that's chamber music. Everything is chamber music. Yeah. Everything. If you play concerto, I, I'm still speaking to the bassoon who's finishing the line, and then I take it over. But if I hear some people who are just in their box, it's, it seems like they're missing um, most of the joy also. Right. I don't want to be there by myself. I'm not playing all of it by myself. It's a symphony orchestra. What is the first thing you do when you get to Israel? I would say we probably take a walk on the beach. Yeah. Because we're staying there and then I like to go and have Trina at my cousin. She's the best <laughs> Trina maker in the world. Um, favorite concert hall? Oh, the music Music Wow. Of course. What's your favorite airport? I think Munich is phenomenal. The oh, new yeah. Munich airport, Franz Josef. What do I think? Quite amazing. <laughs> what calms you down? Usually a good glass of vodka will do it. Magnesium? No, I'm <laughs> <laughs> Half my suitcase is vitamins, by the way. What would you be if you weren't a musician? A dog trainer. I wanted to be Jimmy Connors number two. In the old days when there was a wooden, uh, the wooden racket, 
I'd put it on top of the violin. I used to know, actually, until what time I could play tennis before playing. Sibelius, I can tell you, I had to stop by 5 o'clock, 5.30, <laughs> because this time, oh my God, this really got, whoosh. <laughs> Beethoven concerto, I could play till about 40 minutes before. <laughs> Brahms, maybe an hour before, stuff like that. A musical piece that drew you to the musical world. Well, something that maybe made you want to become a musician. Oh, well, the old Heifetz Piatigorsky recordings and Casals. The trio. Yeah. Which music are you listening to right now on your iPod? Prince. Uh, Prince? Yeah. I have to listen to Prince, otherwise earworms on and on and on. It'll repeat what I heard last. How do you feel about playing in Israel with the Israel Philharmonic? He calls it family, Ace. This is my family. At first, I played in 1961, with you, I was 11 years old, and Chaim was leading. Right. Um, so I've known the orchestra through three generations at this point. And I must say, this generation is phenomenal. It's just great to see you guys and to see so many new faces around. It's, that's, that's what we live for. I mean, that's what I live for is to continue the tradition, and uh, that's it. The rest of it, I hope we get lucky and we're able to somehow put music in the territories. And I, I've been asking well, whoever I meet, politicians, to open the window just a little bit. Please open the window for us. We'll take care of the rest, you know? <laughs>